The Vietnam War stands as one of the most tumultuous periods in modern history, shaping the socio-political landscape of the United States and the world. At the center of this conflict was General William Westmoreland, a commanding figure who led American forces in Vietnam from 1964 to 1968. His leadership, strategies, and controversial decisions had far-reaching consequences that continue to be analyzed and debated to this day. Early Life and Military Career William Childs Westmoreland was born on March 26, 1914, in Spartanburg, South Carolina. His upbringing was rooted in military traditions, as his father was a U.S. Army colonel. Inspired by his family's legacy and a sense of duty, Westmoreland pursued a military career. He graduated from West Point in 1936 and steadily rose through the ranks, exhibiting tactical brilliance and leadership skills during World War II and the Korean War. These early successes set the stage for his eventual command of American forces in Vietnam. Assuming Command in Vietnam in June 1964, General Westmoreland took command of U.S. Military Assistance Command, Vietnam, MACV, becoming the face of American military involvement in the war. He inherited a complex and rapidly evolving situation that would challenge even the most experienced military minds. Westmoreland's strategy centered on a doctrine of attrition, aimed at wearing down the enemy through constant engagement and inflicting higher casualties on the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong forces than they could replace. This approach was in line with the broader U.S. policy of containment during the Cold War. The controversial role of body counts One of the most contentious aspects of Westmoreland's leadership was the emphasis on body counts as a measure of success. The search and destroy missions, designed to engage and eliminate enemy forces, often resulted in inflated body count reports that sparked criticism and skepticism about the war's progress. Critics argued that this approach didn't consider the broader socio-political factors at play in Vietnam, and didn't address the root causes of the conflict. Escalation and Tet Offensive Under Westmoreland's leadership, American troop levels in Vietnam increased dramatically, reaching a peak of around 500,000 soldiers. This escalation was meant to tip the balance decisively in favor of the US and South Vietnamese forces. However, the Tet Offensive of 1968 revealed the limitations of Westmoreland's strategy. The Tet Offensive, launched by the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong forces, demonstrated that the enemy was still capable of launching coordinated and large-scale attacks despite the heavy losses they had suffered. While the offensive was eventually repelled, the psychological impact on both the American public and policymakers was profound, undermining confidence in the war effort and hastening Westmoreland's departure from Vietnam. Legacy and Later Years Westmoreland's tenure in Vietnam came to an end in 1968 as he was replaced by General Creighton Abrams. He returned to the U.S. and was met with mixed reactions. Some praised his leadership and dedication to duty, while others criticized his strategies and handling of the war. In the years following his military service, Westmoreland found himself embroiled in legal battles. He filed a defamation lawsuit against CBS over a documentary that criticized his leadership during the war. The case eventually ended in an out-of-court settlement. William Westmoreland passed away on July 18, 2005, leaving behind a legacy that continues to be debated by historians, military strategists, and policymakers. His time as the commander of American forces in Vietnam remains a complex chapter in U.S. military history marked by both strategic innovations and the challenges of a deeply divisive conflict. Conclusion General William Westmoreland's role as the commander of American forces in Vietnam from 1964 to 1968 is a pivotal and controversial part of both military and American history. His strategies, including the focus on body counts and attrition, shaped the course of the war and had profound effects on the lives of countless individuals. While opinions about his leadership remain divided, his legacy prompts important discussions about the complexities of warfare, decision-making in high-stakes situations, and the enduring impact of conflict on societies and individuals. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you'll be notified when we upload new videos.
Thank you again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. You can also help to support of my channels at PayPal details in the description box below.